Well, welcome to today's podcast. Well, today we'll be talking about what makes a good podcast and what makes a really bad podcast. As we all remember, we have good professors, bad professors sometimes, you know, those drooling ones. So we're going to go into detail today. We're going to, we have some very special invited guests. We have Alexis, we have Joyce, we have Mumita, and Paul, and we have Aaron coming in later. Today we're going to give you a special banter podcast where we just <laughs> dish it out, the goods and the bads about podcasts. Take it away, Alexis. Okay, um, so I was really contemplating this whole topic um, over the last week, and I kept thinking, you know, what beyond the obvious uh, makes a podcast bad? Like, obviously bad sound um, isn't helpful, um, you know, when people talk over each other, when there isn't good editing, like all that is pretty obvious. Like that goes for videos as well. It goes for any sort of recording. So I kind of took to the web. I went into Reddit of all places to see um, what people had kind of said about bad podcasts. And there actually wasn't a ton of information, um, but one person did a uh, link to this podcast called uh, Pod Gods. So I gave this podcast a listen and I hadn't heard about it before, but they actually do a weekly podcast. Like they have upwards of 300 podcasts. Um, but the problem with it was, and I see why someone tagged it as a bad podcast, was it kind of, it's, it was a banter style, but there wasn't enough um, lead in information. Like I didn't know what one podcast from week to week was. And for me in the podcast I listen to, and some people might disagree, some people might like the random banter style. But for me, even though I have certain podcasts that I follow, I don't keep up every week. Like I want to be able to just jump in to any episode that I want and have a general idea of what's going on. It's kind of like sitcom television. Like um, if I think of like the television show Friends or I think about Big Bang Theory, it's like I know enough that I can kind of pick up any episode and still get some enjoyment out of it. And I think with podcasts particularly, um, you know, there's some that are just amazing and people are going to stick with every week. But I think a lot of them, you maybe have the occasional listener, just like the occasional TV watcher, the occasional, you know, participant. And you need um, to have enough information provided that people can just jump in. So that was kind of the big thing that I um, discovered over this last week and really was able to contemplate. Yeah, I think um, it's yeah, particularly, um, this is Joyce, and I think it's particularly ironic that it was Reddit because Reddit has so many little pockets of, of uh, like, I don't know, I want to say community or alert or like meeting groups or whatever that are really very exclusive and you you know you'll go in there and you're like I have no idea what you're talking about so I think it's interesting that you mind your information from there because because there's so many times <laughs> when I've been on there I'm like that is not the place for me right and and we're talking about how what we like about podcasts um, other than you know the quality of the production really is like Sort of like that they're inclusive or accepting. I, I mentioned before that nobody wants to be the new kid in class who doesn't know what's going on, doesn't have any friends. You want to make sure that you have some kind of point of connection right when you enter. Um, I also think uh, it's really great that you mentioned the sitcom television because that's one thing that we keep returning to in our uh, discussions about podcasts is really that that serialization or you know on Wikipedia it automatically defines a podcast as an episodic series of digital files, right? So it's really, there's there's that, you know, continuity. So when we, when we jump into like friends, you said friends, right? Like we kind of know, okay, we know these characters, we know the premise of it, but we're okay with going into a new situation with those people, right? So um, it's a really fine balance. It's very difficult to do because I think I've been on the flip end where, or the other side where you kind of, you you're like you know those um, uh, U.S. Uh, television shows do it a lot where they're like on the last episode and they kind of like and you're like yeah. oh my gosh like, right. I, you know it's 20 minutes of explaining what happened in the last episode and you kind of don't want to be there either right so I think um, you know with podcasts it's, it's even it's an even finer balance because you don't have the, the beautiful visuals and and you have to be able to like make sure that your 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 community and you're like you're welcoming new people or you're welcoming those drop-in people while at the same time kind of honoring those people who have been with you from the beginning right yeah i definitely agree 
And I know we were talking about just uh, just earlier about how some podcasts almost have a Twitter feed as, as a way of bringing in more people, uh, being able to kind of extend the discussion. And I was thinking about that some more because, um, as I mentioned in our last podcast, I um, listened to the podcast Stuff Mom Never Told You. And they have yeah. a Twitter um, that I've... I've looked at multiple times because they'll, it, it'll just, you know, a lot of it's retweeting stuff or they retweet what their viewers have uh, commented about their last podcast. So it kind of extends the conversation. And I mean, that medium might not be for everyone, but I think ultimately um, successful podcasts are kind of an ongoing conversation and um, just being able to, to bring the viewers into the discussion, I think is kind of what sets uh, you know, better pod, uh, better podcasts apart from, you know, the not so great ones. And especially, you know, the ones that end up eventually getting funding, it's because they, um, you know, can extend beyond just their one hour recording, mm, that's right. you know, every once yeah. in a while. So yeah. I think in a way podcasts are one part of this bigger um, podcast world like I know that even like coming back to reddit I know reddit is a huge community that talks about podcasts and what they liked about podcasts and um, maybe ones that are controversial they'll discuss it on there and I mean they don't hold back on reddit of course but I think um, I think it still is part of the community that sort of off off audio discussion like text yeah. discussion yeah yeah that and that 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 I'm glad you bring that up too because I, sometimes I feel like um, you know it's it's really quite ephemeral like you kind of make these things you put them on and then they disappear forever right but if you think about famous speeches I so I'm teaching an uh, uh, AP language and composition course which is all nonfiction we do a lot of rhetorical analysis and we look at famous speeches all the time, right? If you said, if I said, chances are even among our group members here, if I said, you know, Martin Luther King's I have a dream speech, somewhere along the lines, you you, you have all heard of, of it or have heard portions of it, right? And I think totally. the podcast, one of the frustrating things for me is, is the feeling, and all actually kind of mobile technology and, and digital files is that like, are they just disappearing forever? And so I, I'm just doing a little quick search on like, you know, how, do do podcasts go viral? Because, you know, you're talking about <laughs> tweeting them and read, like, do they go viral? I don't know. Like, I just, do they? <laughs> That's the question I have for you guys. Like, uh, going viral is kind of like what you want to do nowadays, right? Yeah. So um, Momita here. And I just want to share good good uh, experience about post podcasts that I had this week because, like I said in the previous podcast, I'm not very uh, I'm not an ardent user of podcasts, and for various reasons. And uh, this project has led me to, you know, take a nose dive and discover and explore podcasts. So this happened that uh, the other day it was about the bedtime of my daughter. And I was researching on good podcasts and bad podcasts. Uh, and suddenly I found this story site where they tell kids bedtime stories. Mm. And I thought, let me try that out. <laughs> yeah. You can, what, what is that site? I need it too. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Story Nori. Okay. Because some, some nights you really, it's, you just don't have the energy to do the bedtime story. <laughs> exactly. And uh, it for me, it's almost all the days. But then, <laughs> and so I I played a couple of podcasts there, and I was completely new to the site. And uh, and I mean, I am an adult, and I was hooked to the stories. Uh -oh. and, and you can imagine, my little one was beside me, and she was just hearing it all earnestly. And it was a huge hit, I would say, because uh, and some of the characteristics which I noted are completely uh, complementing what you guys told about what's not what are the characteristics of a bad podcast and since i would rate it as a very good podcast i would say that i i jumped in i randomly clicked some stories and i could immediately get the context it was not boring for me it was not too much information and it had a, it had a lot of dramatization as in the host the narrator the girl she 
made different kind of voice modulations to make the story really really appear realistic <laughs> and uh, it was it was it was fun and uh, somewhere like 5 minutes somewhere 10 minutes somewhere thrillers somewhere you know uh, some advice kind of you know moral stories kind of thing uh, but it was it was nice and she i mean everywhere she subtly threw some cues like oh so this is the character who grew up like this so if you want to know more about this you should perhaps listen to this podcast and and i was also hooked and i wanted to click like three or four podcasts in the series to understand more and i think that kind those things that those subtle cues where a user has reasons to go back to other podcasts in the same series are very critical to you know measure the success of a podcast and obviously it was professionally voice modulated narrated with some subtle background music and stuff like that and the context was was a story the context was not something you know a discussion or thing like that uh but yeah i tried some discussions too which i didn't find that interesting but this was really a good um i mean i would definitely go back to podcasts for this reason um and i i was a completely new user to podcast so yeah mm-hmm. it was a good story for me to share yeah and i think that's i think that's really key so part of the producer of that podcast that you probably liked mentioning those other podcasts that you should listen to is really like here's the community that i'm part of and and that's really that's you know that's you know like come join me in listening to these other ones right which is like kind of what that's what com- like companies are trying to do but without that personal connection or mentorship and i say i use personal really loosely cuz obviously you don't know the producers you know you're not calling them and inviting them over for dinner um but um the idea that like uh cuz you know how you know how you get on goodreads or like amazon like oh if you're if you're interested in this then you should listen to this or spotify like all of those ones and i'm like yeah. those are terrible suggestions like you don't yeah. i'm always like looking at the netflix suggestions like like you don't know me like <laughs> so um so i think but you know maybe maybe is our podcast the place where they do know you because like you're here and if you've listened this long then you know you do you do is there a trust like are we building trust there like cuz i know for speaking about like just inclusiveness and community there has to be a sense of trust right right yeah um, Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Uh, this is Paul. Um, I think you know. I I think I wanted. Uh, I want to get back to Joyce's initial question that she posed to us, which is like, will our our pods you know, podcasts are they supposed to go viral? And I was thinking about it right now, and I'm I'm almost leaning to the not really side, um, because like podcasts, we I think we uh, we're saying that it's pretty personalized. Um, or at least, you know, uh, it's so personalized that uh, the listenership wants to more or less seek out their own podcasts or own interests. And I think that a, a good podcast is a matter of, uh, well, at least one one criteria of a good podcast is good interpersonal communication on behalf of the um, on behalf of the um, the speech deliverer. Uh, and that's sort of like really similar to radio broadcasting in a certain way where it sort of draws in people uh, through a really, really captivating um, speaker. Uh, but I, I don't remember which uh, announcer it was. It was like a CBC announcer. I think it was like Bill Richardson or something like that. He said that broadcasting is not public speaking. It's an audience of ones and twos. Ooh. Yeah. And well, so more yeah. or less the way I understood that was that a, uh, that quote was... Um, uh, you know, broadcasting and podcasting included, uh, it invites interpersonal communication, or at least the feeling of it. And, yeah. Yeah. And I know, like, it's really personal, so it's like really inviting. And so a lot of a lot of the um, you know during the golden age of radio, the the, the people speaking would be really really into this uh, captivating uh, interpersonal sort of speech, 
in order to invite people in like the assumption was that you're sitting you're sitting with your family or you're sitting with the community and listening to this stuff right and it's really inviting and then i think it gets sort of back to what alexis is saying uh you know if it is inviting the listenership has like a way into into that podcast or into that uh broadcast yeah yeah um, I, sorry i go ahead joyce I, re I really like how you're tying all those threads together, um, Paul, especially that broadcasting is not public speaking because that really answers my question of like, you know, why don't we remember famous podcasts or why won't we remember famous podcasts as opposed to famous speeches, right? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and I'm reflect this is Alexis, and reflecting on what you uh, asked Joyce about, um, you know, can podcasts go viral? I have to kind of agree with Paul in the sense, like, I, I just don't think to the same extent, like it's, it just doesn't have the same um, stay power as maybe videos do just because it's missing that, you know, visual element. But I was thinking about it some more and I was thinking, well, I mean, it kind of depends on how you reflect on the term viral. Like I, I was talking to a couple coworkers about this because I have two coworkers that I work with um, that are obsessed with this podcast called My Favorite Murder. I don't know if anyone has heard of this. I actually haven't listened to it myself. Um, but they even have merchandise. Like, my coworkers have shirts from this podcast. Like, the podcast actually produces merchandise. They have yeah. a website. They have a Twitter. Um, one of the shirts that my coworker wears is, uh, <laughs> stay sexy, don't get murdered. And, like... <laughs> I actually have like no advice. idea what that means, but it stuck with me. You it was like really good advice, though. <laughs> yeah, pro probably right. And uh, I mean, I've never even watched the podcast, but it stuck with me so much. Like I just remember this term, and I'm like, I I think in a way it becomes viral within these like certain circles. Yeah, it almost becomes yeah. it almost becomes like cult like. Like yeah. even though I have never watched the podcast, I know about it because of these shirts and like they talk about. Um, uh, they talk about famous murders and kind of like, you know, uh, what the banter is online about them and all that sort of thing. And then I was asking my coworker, like, why do you love it so much? And she said um, that it's because it's almost like two best friends talking. Like mm. they're just kind of chit chatting about this kind of dramatic thing. Um, and then, yeah, and then they've brought in this community where not only is it like Twitter, where, you know, you can go be a listener and you can um, tweet about the podcast, they actually have mini episodes where people can write in. And um, I guess they, the um, two podcast hosts, I guess you could say, they talk about what viewers have written in about. So in that way, it's like taking it to a whole new level. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's almost like radio. Yeah, a radio yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 there, radio. there is that element, you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah late night I, radio like in your car where people are like yeah. calling in about the relationship yeah. problems yeah, 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 yeah. And, like they Actually, get advice that, that totally this is um there was uh, so i was i used to listen to quite a lot of podcasts when i was painting my house <laughs> so it's like when you have lots of time and you can't really like focus your eyes on something it's, it's nice to have it's like the radio it's like having the radio on i have it on and i remember <laughs> i remember my uh my partner actually uh tweeted to them and then they mentioned and he was tweeting them about me and then they mentioned me and i was like wow i feel so famous right <laughs> like, you're right i forgot about that element yeah that's so interesting yeah it totally is and then yeah. all of a sudden you feel like oh my gosh like they know me like maybe they'll recognize my name like maybe i'm yeah, part of this yeah, new yeah, cult yeah. like yeah it's interesting so, well my question is like do you know the um the SAMR model, you know, the S-A-M-R, it's talking about technology and like the very first element of technology is just substitution. So instead cool. of, yeah, like, so instead of um, writing on paper, you're just using your laptop to Word document to type stuff out and how you actually need to like, you know, move up the levels, right? So it's substitution, augmentation, modification, and then redefinition, right? So. Our so one thing that's kind of troubling me is like our podcasts, we keep we kind of like skirt around it and touch on it a little bit, but our podcast just a substitution? Is it a direct substitute to radio? Like now even in, in this conversation here, we've brought up so many elements that were just like, oh, it's it's broadcasting, it's radio, right? It's radio again, right? So what what makes it different, you know? Like I think yeah, I, I, maybe I'll touch a bit on that is 
the I'll well, go back to the point I mentioned before. It's about the community. Like, in general, I feel like in general, radios has very specific like a community who listen to certain shows. Like I know, like my parents and myself used to listen to this one radio, which is talking about um, kind of like exploring the different interesting points around the world. Like uh, like that. It's like Chi- It's like a Chinese geography radio channel. Like it talked about really interesting geographies and like cultures around places, and we listened because it was kind of like it's kind of like almost like um adult version of a bedtime story <laughs> that you could just okay. listen along. I feel like that's a lot of times yeah. it's what a lot you know why people a lot of older people listen to maybe because that the story element. For example, like I'll mention like one of the podcasts I listen to um, a lot is uh, it's like a a board game that they play like. They play board game live, like Dungeons oh, and Dragons wow. live. <laughs> oh, and, sweet! And then like, oh, crazy, awesome. Yes, and you see the problem is they have a Twitch, and after they turn the Twitch into podcast, on their Twitch following, even people just listening, there's usually about thirty five thousand people listening. Wow. Yeah, like I think it's. I guess it goes back. You know, can podcast be viral? I think that it could be viral within a certain community of people who. Have similar interests or have a connection to that podcast. Like, I play. I've been playing board games since I was like what, grade ten. It's been about a long time now. And then you know, when I hear po- podcasts about board games, of course I'm going to listen in because you know that's like that's like my childhood. So I right. think like yeah, I definitely think podcast can go viral viral if they you have a personal connection to the podcast. I think that's really what defines like. You know, a good and bad podcast as well is that mm-hmm. personal connection. That's why I think mm-hmm. we can reset on a, a very broad. Like I can set on a very broad one, the good or bad podcast. Of course, the bad part probably include bad sound effects and you know editing. But I think, and then like maybe a lot of like you know inappropriate languages like the uh, pod gods. But I think like you know at the same time, yeah. it's really podcast is so theme thematically based and so personal based that it is. Difficult sometimes to nail down a good and bad podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, Alexis here, just reflecting back on. Oh, there's a little feedback. Sorry, um, just reflecting back on um, this uh, Joyce's question about: Is it just replacing um, you know a medium that already exists? And I was kind of thinking about that because I think for regular radio, I don't know if it would be replacing just because radio is so, it's still so funded by advertising and sponsors and that sort of thing. But then I started thinking, what about serious radio? Like I don't listen to serious radio, but in a way it almost seems like podcast is another um, version of serious radio. And like serious radio, I, I've never really listened to it that much because you have to have a subscription. But so maybe in a way podcasts are sort of, um, extend like maybe not duplicating but kind of extending this world of radio and free radio in kind of more of a free realm like I don't I I don't think I've ever come into contact with a podcast that you have to subscribe to like the only thing I've ever seen is that you can donate like I think sometimes they'll ask for a dollar donation or sometimes they'll maybe ask for a dollar a month like it's nothing really much it's just kind of enough to keep your you know favorite entertainment going but it's Mm -hmm. not the same sort of subscription as in like serious radio where you have to pay yeah. monthly, right? So yeah, yeah. So yeah. So the next level on the Samer model is augmentation. So that's where technology is uh, is the direct tool substitute, but then there's functional improvement, right? So I'm, I'm, you know, I just, I don't, I don't think we can. I would not feel comfortable in our so far based on our discussions and explorations to say that it's a redefinition of radio. I don't think it's this like, I, do, would you say? I, I think there's augmentation. I think there's modification. I think, you know, there's a lot of direct parallels, but I don't think it's this completely innovative, mind-blowingly new thing, if, or is it? Uh, I think I'll take that question on is that I don't think it really, um, I guess, I would say, uh, modify, of, I think it's like a slight twist of the radio because ultimately radios are live. You know, the biggest part about radio is that they're live people, so you can literally... That's right. A lot of times, those are some of the favorite radio shows, like those people who call in and do like those reactions and a lot of like call-in discussion live. That's what makes it a lot of mm-hmm. time interesting. It's, it's, not, it's almost like a news 
in a sense like a like um like a news like a news radio. It's like they always talk about live thing, and then I of course I know people a lot of people listen to radio because of the traffic for the traffic news. So that I think that yeah, podcast lacks this live element, like up constantly updated live element, and that that's what makes yeah. it stand out a lot from radio is that the live element is not there. Yeah, which I think, which is why what Alexa and, what, and yeah. I were talking about, and we're, this group is talking about, is like that necessity of the Twitter, of the Twitter feed, right? Or that many of them have, or that sort of like reading listeners' letters, right, or something like that. You know, those are the live elements. Yes, I I, I don't know. Yeah. One thing is, I just realized that I know I don't know if we could talk about, but the um, Twitch. You, everyone knows Twitch TV. It's like this giant live stream platform they recently started doing yeah. podcast as well so it's like they're allowing people like uh, streamers from the past to play their previously recorded videos together with fans and look at them together it's kind of okay. like a community building vodcast so you know i just look at this is like but it, it's it's only for gamers yeah it's not just game anybody on twitch could do that Theoretically, if you could, if okay. you have an account with Twitch, you could theoretically play any past video if you record it and look at it with your uh, community, I guess. Because we all know that Twitch is probably Twitch TV ha probably has one of the biggest online community for many different platform games, podcasts, and shows yeah. and whatnot. So yeah. you know, going back, is it possible to build a community? Yes, I think definitely build a community. Yes, but then it's that I think really a good. Like going back to like um, the point that I said, the podcast is so dependent on the, as well on the uh, I guess the host and the theme. Yeah. So just sorry, on an offshoot, offshoot, I'm remembering the last episode in which we talked about why it's difficult to use podcasts in the classroom, and I sort of mentioned, well, it's just really awkward to sit in a classroom when you <laughs> look at someone's face and instead just be listening to something together, like you don't know where to look. I think we talked about that um, to differentiate it between vodcasts and podcasts. So um, like, I don't know that something like Twitch, could something like Twitch work for podcasts where everybody listens to a podcast together and comments on it? And then it becomes another user experience based on that? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of torn about that, Joyce. And but I, sorry, I feel like, if, if so, yeah. can we make that and make money on it? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, you know, maybe the solution to this awkwardness in using podcasts in education is there has to be an interactive part to it. Maybe you just, maybe without that element of being able to interact with the hosts and interact with other viewers, like you just miss you miss an educational opportunity, then it just becomes like a video or, or yeah. like regular radio or, you know, whatever. I think mm -hmm. maybe, maybe what can differentiate podcasts is the fact that they are generally free to t tune into. You don't need a subscription. Um, you don't need special permission, but you can have this, you know, kind of interactivity, um, where it maybe it doesn't have to be long term. Like maybe you can just listen in for one episode and then join into the Twitter feed and maybe that can be one class activity. Maybe that would kind of eliminate some of this awkwardness. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's so yeah. um Paul, you you talked about like you you know the, the golden age of radio and when families would sit around and I think there's like a Norman Rockwell painting that's like that. Um you know all the families sitting around a radio. Did they look at the actual radio while that was happening? I, what did they look at? I don't know. I think maybe I have no idea what they were looking at. I know that a lot of the uh, images that I've seen, they, they are sort of staring at the radio, but it would be like yeah. they seem pretty doctored, like the these pictures, um, you know, from a from, – from like – Black and white United age. Back. Yeah, <laughs> black and white. Everybody's staring straight at the at – the, <laughs> electrical coil inside or something i don't know <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they didn't they were like that but then maybe there'd be like mm, dad who's like reading the newspaper and the kid uh playing with the torture so it's almost, almost like this like 1950s 60s sort of um quote ideal society sort of thing yeah 
Yeah. So I think looking at the pictures that I think we have seen similar ones that a lot of times listening to a radio also means that you're doing something with your hands and your other parts of your attention. Yeah. Because I yeah. a lot of times I think radios like even based on the pictures I've seen historical pictures I've taken is that people are doing something else while also listening. It's almost like the radio is a background. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So what if is it possible to maybe set up like you know? Well, students are maybe, I guess, doing something like painting in class or something simple that you can listen to a podcast in the background, similar to what? Oh, that, that's a good idea. Maybe. I kind of like that idea. Like, I think, like, yeah, even yeah. like Joyce was mentioning earlier uh, about listening to podcasts while you're painting your house. Like, I listen to them while I'm cleaning. So maybe it needs to almost be used more as a secondary kind of background tool. You know, maybe it doesn't need to be the focus, but as an additional maybe it would be more effective and it would take away yeah. the awkward that awkwardness with just sitting around yeah. and listening to audio and like staring at your classmates and wondering like what yeah. with your eyes and your hands right yeah <laughs> yeah it's true Can um, I jump in there sorry <laughs> hi Aaron welcome hey, hey, it's Aaron. sorry uh just tuning in but um just wanted to jump in the way I use podcasts in my classroom is I always start the day uh, with it running in the background with a little bit of it. Sometimes it's like a news thing. Sometimes it's like a fun facts. Uh, there's a lot of really good kids podcasts out there that come in very short form, five to 10 minute kind of bursts. And I like that the format can be used in a, in a classroom context and in the background, like we're saying. And I like to pair that up with other activities. So it could be drawing, um, it could be conversing, it could be just silent reflection time. But I find that having the podcast as a, I don't like to think of it as a background thing. I like to think of it as it still sits in our forefront. But like we were saying, um, we, 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 we need something to look at, right? So I always try to give them something visual to pair with that audio. So if the, uh, if the podcast is about music, then perhaps I may have them try to do something musical uh, with it. Or if it's about art, then maybe I'll have them try to do some art. So... I think if we use it sort of in a background way, um, we I don't want to think of it as a background thing because when when we when we start to think of it that way, I feel like maybe it, it becomes sort of like an afterthought. Like um, that's not really the crux of the lesson, but really when I use it, I do make it the crux of my lesson. Yet it doesn't feel that way to the kids because mm -hmm. I package it like, "Hey, kids, we're all going to sit down uh, and you know and and listen to this for five minutes." Then they don't they're not interested they don't respond to that but if i'm like hey we're gonna get up and dance for five minutes while listening to this podcast boom everybody is into it everybody loves it and and i love that podcast has that transformative quality so yeah that's that's sort of my experience there <laughs> okay yeah, cool. so it looks like on this particular um episode we're looking at a couple of questions so that first one that um, Edric mentioned, which is what makes a good podcast for us, what makes a bad one. Uh, the one that I had was, um, can they go viral? So we'd love to hear some input on that. Um, do we have a hashtag? Oh, yeah, 365. <laughs> we should make a hashtag. Podcast 365? Uh, podcast 565? I love it. Yeah. So, so, so podcast, uh, 565 M. Oh, podcast 565 M. Yeah. So if you are out there listening, <laughs> please feel free to tweet uh, answers to those questions. Um, what makes a good one? What makes a bad one for you? Can they go viral? Am I missing any questions? And also any maybe mention some podcasts that you really enjoy or some some of the ones that you really hate. Join us in the banter and the bashing. Well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>